morning, I'm J. K. Han uh, from Robotics and Mechanism Lab at Virginia Tech. Uh, today, I will be providing more details about the Darwin OP hardware. Uh, so, there are several features uh, built into mechanical design uh, that makes it exciting for a number of different applications. Uh, at first, it's very easy to work with, easy to disassemble, and the place component due to its modularity. A big part of this modularity is uh, due to into dynamics and motors. Uh, the Kim already uh, introduced about the motors. Uh, uh, they, uh, dynamics uh, have a variety of mounting points, output configurations, and are electrically linked with uh, both power and communication signals. Uh, through daisy chain wires. I think you already know about the daisy chains. Uh, in addition to its modular, mo uh, modular design, Dyn OPS center of mass is located at the right hip joint, which can simplify the model and simulation. Uh, it is uh, it's also designed and built to meet our local rules uh, for the key side division of the humanoid leg. Therefore, it is ready for the competition lie out of the box. Uh, and one more thing is the comput uh, computational. Uh, uh, <coughs> sorry about it. Excuse me. <coughs> computational platform in Darwin is based on uh, a uh, conventional PC platform. Therefore, it has all the features uh, most. PC users are used to, uh, including DVI, USB, uh, and Ethernet, and camera, speaker ports, as well as all the computational power necessary for local competition, as well as a, a research program. Of course. Uh, the last one, uh, the most exciting feature is, is on its open platform design which makes it very easily modified by any user. Uh, meaning it's easily hackable on both a software and hardware level. Therefore, many additional features can be added. Uh, for example, a gripper uh, can be uh, utilized by modifying the code. I will uh, talk about it later. <coughs> so, as I mentioned, Darwin is designed to comply with all the rules of the key side division of the humanoid, humanoid league of the local soccer competition. So if you want to compete in the local competition, uh, this robot meets all the uh, criteria as it is purchased. Some of the key requirements are uh, it must have a humanoid form. I, I'm, I'm gonna uh, explain about the uh, humanoid league's rules uh, briefly. So it must have a humanoid form uh, and uh, locomotion strategy. So uh, the robot cannot use leg and arm to work. So sorry, can like this. <laughs> it's a uh, 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 legal and. Uh, its size is also very important. So we are focusing on the kid size leaf. Kid size is a, a smallest size, and it's the most exciting game, as long as it. Uh, so uh, the, at the height of s about 46 centimeter, it qualifies as a kid size robot. Another important dimension is the foot size. Uh, everybody knows how important foot size is. Uh, uh, it directly affects the stability of the robot, as well as being closely uh, regulated. The rule stipulates that the foot area should be less than the height squared by, by sorry, it's a little bit confused, but uh, the, this number uh, means uh, it should be up to 
more than 100 uh, inventory, but they are using sorry now. So that uh, viral by uh, Darwin robot hit into that sorry. And then the, one of the most thing is uh, the arm. The arm are also uh, specifically designed to have a span less than 1.2 times of the height. Uh, we're still allowing the robot to stand up after it falls. You already uh, watched how awesome the stand up motion. Uh, therefore, if anyone wants to participate in the future robot competition in the humanoid league, they can just bring the robot without any modification. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Next. I want to introduce about the range of motion of Darwin. The, uh, this uh, column shows the uh, standard human's range of motion. Uh, please compare to these two guys. This is Darwin office uh, range of motion. Uh, of course, Dar Darwin doesn't have a waist, uh, waist and some other things, but it's uh, good enough. Uh, to mimic the human motion and uh, the range is very similar for more than human beings. Uh, so, uh, so uh, for you, uh, I want to talk about the uh, field of view. The field of view for Darwin is very large. Uh, when one considers both the comet camera field and the range of motion of the head, uh, this gives Darwin Opie the, uh, the ability to track the object. Uh, this, uh, I want to show you the, the how camera cover the area. The, so this angle is uh, a range of motion of the head. And this angle is a range of range of uh, RM, and uh, this shape is camera field of view, camera itself. So it can cover uh, from minus 80 degree to 60 degree, and it can uh, in, in the top view, the Darwin can cover from more than minus 105 degree to plus. Uh, 185 degrees. It can, it, which means you can see uh, everywhere. Uh, uh, honestly, the local of rules is uh, slightly less than uh, this degree, but dynamics uh, model can cover uh, uh, this degree. So you might need to uh, make it small to attend the competition. Anyway, uh, for another, uh, another reason, you can use uh, all of them. That's the uh, ability of Darwin. Yeah, uh, we are using a, a USB HD camera. Uh, the model number is, uh, what's the model? C so also as I mentioned, it's an open platform, so if you want to use a different type of USB camera, take it out, put it in, you can modify it. Yeah, I will I wanna talk about the modifying later okay. on the last slide. So anyway, it's a one of the features of Darwin of you can Disassemble anything you want and assemble anything, any sensor, any some cameras, something like that. So I'll, I'm going to talk about it later. So, next, uh, I will introduce how to assemble the Darwin and uh, something like that. So the Darwin assembly can be divided up into five main modules. Legs, and arm, and lower body, upper body, uh, 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 how can I say, the 
KIP, KIP group, and Ukobari group, and electronics modules. Uh, in this picture, you can see how easy it is to disassemble soft components from each other with a uh, modular design and phase chain wire. This gives us users the ability to quickly and readily assemble, disassemble, or replace a component. The main concept of the, the uh, hardware design is modularity. So you can modify one of those. You can, if you want uh, another arm, you can uh, take this guy off and uh, you can assemble your own head, uh, hand and or arm or leg. That's, that's the main concept of the uh, uh, hardware design. So I want, let me introduce some more. So, Video. Uh, here, the following video you can see a stop motion movie. Uh, the first process takes approximately five to six hours and is done with all M2 hex bolt or Philips head bolt. As you can see, the modular design makes it easy to assemble with this simple hand tool and more resembles putting together an electro set than a human 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 eye robot. Uh, here you can see the assembly process. Uh, assembly process. Uh, uh, so uh, I just take one guy off from the assembly manuals. Uh, I want to show you the legs module uh, for one example. So this is a foot and hip joint. So you can start from the one motor. So uh, from from this, uh, you can attach the some brackets, for example, foot, something like that, and keep, continue, uh, keep assembling, like assembling brackets like this and like this, and mm, connect the wires like that. You can see it needs just one wire because uh, it uses day chain. So it's very simple uh, component. It will be very simple component. So, uh, the next. Yes. And, and uh, of course, the professor uh, process for assembling the other four modules is similar, like this, similar. And let's go to the electronic part. The electronics are composed of only two powerful components. One is the primary PC, which is this, uh, called PPC, uh, PPC and that is uh, responsible for the high computational performance of Dowino Peak and is used for the high level controls and programming. Uh, this PC has all the normal features a uh, user will expect such as USB, DVI, and internet ports. Uh, the low le for low level control and sensor hardware uses the CM730 from Robotics, which is this board. Uh, this board integrates all sensors necessary for working, such as uh, IMU. Both these components are arranged in the chest. This is a chest. This fit into this area. Uh, that consumes very little space and maintains a lot of proportion and is an improvement I think it is a improvement over the customary backpack solution. So most robot has a backpack for uh, computer, computer or a battery or so but it's a one of the the different point 
with another robot. Next, I'm going to uh, talk about the cases. Uh, you see the three designs of the drawing. There are 14 different injection mold parts available as test for Darwin okay? These parts are not necessary for the robot work, but are available for sale from robots. Uh, the cases are precision molded out of polycarbonate, which is the material often used for its impact robustness and toughness. The injection molding process allowed for the part to be made very precisely, thus reducing the overall thickness and therefore with weight of the robot. Because the material is also very strong, it is resilient to form and force. Uh, as you can see, the vice president kicked the robot, but it was okay, <laughs> thanks to the body company. Uh, uh, you know what the, bl uh, the window, bullet brick, bullet brick window is made by this very common. Is it bulletproof? Ah. Like a Sorry? A little bit other corruption. Color options. Color? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you can paint. Paint. <laughs> <laughs> make their own covers that show up because all the CAD files are available. I'm sure a lot of people are going to come up with really deep looking covers. Yeah, that's true. Okay, okay. I want to cover uh, more. Do you know if the cover is capable of enduring the rigors of local soccer game? But the cases can also be made to interact with another. Therefore, the case go together very nicely, such that the seam can almost not be seen. Uh, you can see the robot. I, uh, could you see? Could you watch the robot? You can. You cannot see the seam in here and here, things like that. It's, yeah, yeah. You cannot see it because uh, we use the injection molding part. And let's talk about the CAD model. But off the record, the darn OP, the head design, is modeled after a particular person in this room. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say who he is, or <laughs> he or she is. Quiz, right? Do you have another gift? <laughs> I'm going to do one right after his own. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the Calimodo. Uh, as we have been emphasizing, Darwin OP is a model for an open source platform and that is sent to the 3D models. Therefore, if you use any 3D CAD package such as Imer, Pro Engineer, or Cartier, for example, uh, you will be able to download either a file in STEP or IGS format. We will provide the two kinds of extension uh, style so, so that you import them into your CAD software. This gives users the ability to, de uh, ability to de design your parts to interface with the robot. As I mentioned, you can take, take the arm off and uh, <coughs> assemble your own design. For example, my, Michael designed his head for his robot. You, you, you brought your head, right? Uh, your no, head? Uh, <laughs> your robot's head, not his head. I'm sorry, <laughs> I often confuse <laughs> with robot and people. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the uh, big advantages of Dowling OP. Okay? Uh, so. In addition, anyone uh, 
wishing to actually fabricate a robot from the ground up would be able to do so uh, from the CAD file. Uh, uh, I usually use Proe to design the, the robot. It's a the capture uh, feature of my computer. And you can you can import it like that. Import the robot like that. Uh, then after they purchase the motor and electronics, they will have a complete robot. In addition, the case of failure or accident, a uh, user will have the option of uh, fabricating or uh, repairing of the replacement part to, to specification.